Hello, in this video I'll show you how to get environment variables inside of the Tori and I'm going to show you six ways on how to do it. First, I'll show you how to get environment variables using Tori's command, then how to do the same with Vite, after that how to do with SvelteKit, then how to do with Tori's shell using Sidecar, then I'll show you how to do again with SvelteKit but with private environments, and then the latest one will be how to get environment variables using .env files on the right side and on the front end side using JavaScript or TypeScript. If you like tutorials like this, click subscribe and like this video. Let's go! Okay, first step would be to pull the repository from the GitHub. Just go to the website, copy the git link, go to the terminal, do a git clone, then the link, and finally open it inside the VS Code. Now let's install the dependencies. Do npm install. And now let's run it. npm run tori dev. So here how it works. You enter the name of the variable, you click on the button, and you'll see the result underneath this input. Let's try it with the term variable. And what we see is a result returned from Rust and from the shell, and you see that's exactly the same variable that you would get out of your console. I will comment out all other methods so we can just focus on the first one, get from Rust. All right, let's give it a try. But before, I'm going to show you all the environment variables that we have. One in the .env file, and then end of the development, and then end of production. Inside, you'll see different types of variables, so developer mindset, v developer mindset, public and private, and you'll see why we need them later, so I'll show you the difference. All right, back to the source code. Here, we see how to get from Rust, and this command is basically invokes the get underscore env command in the Rust backend, and then supplies the name argument, and then returns whatever the Rust code returns back to the front end, and then we just return that to the function. And here's how it looks in the Rust code. The get env basically calls for the standard library, environment, variable, and then we just feed the name. And if this name doesn't exist on the system, we just return the empty string at the end. But let me show you how to get this variable from the console first. Just type echo and then dollar sign and then the name of the variable. And here you go. The term variable is x term dash 256 color. And now let's do the same, but inside our app. Just type term, click on button, and here you go. You get the same result. But if you try to get the environment variable from the .n file, you'll actually see something different. Click on the button and nothing, right? So we didn't get the environment variable that we wanted to get out of the files. And I'll show you how to do this later in the following steps. Let's check other variable name, same result. All right, let me show you the next method, how to use Vite to get environment variables. Let's go back to our front end source code and uncomment the line with the Vite from Vite. And we use the function called get from Vite. And it's essentially the same logic, right? But we use the Vite builder to get the environment variable out of the code. But it works slightly different. If you go inside the vite.config.ts, you'll see that we actually configure different prefixes in this system. If you scroll down, you will see that we have different system of prefixes with env prefix, and you see the vite underscore, and that's exactly the prefix we'll use to actually get the variables and make sure that we are allowed to get those variables inside of our front-end application written with TypeScript. And you can see we have all the other Tori variables, but in reality, those should be prefixes. So just Tori underscore, and that's it. All right, let's get back to it. Just checking again the environment variable. And if you see the second line, vit developer mindset, that's the line that we actually get in our application once we run this test. Okay, let's try it again. Do the term, right? You see the same result, but vit doesn't have access to it. And then let's do a different variable name. 
developer mindset, just plain and simple. And that's what you get, empty. But if you do the prefix with vit, you will get one from the development configuration because that's what vit is being used for right now in the development mode. Because remember, we run npm run tori dev. Dev means development. And SvelteKit has a very similar system to the vit itself, but it has slightly more configurations. And if you look here, we have the dynamic version, the static version, public and private. For this one, we're gonna focus on static and public one because dynamic one just won't work because we also do the static side generation. We don't do server side rendering, which doesn't bundle the node backend for the Tor application. It just has a bunch of simple HTML files and that's what we go with. And essentially, again, with Vit, we use the preprocessor, we use the adapter if you see on the li line number two, and we just generate a bunch of static HTML files in the dist folder. And then Tori picks that up and packages all that as a part of the application. And here's one more detail about SvelteKit. If you go to routes, if you click on layout.ts, you'll see that we have pre-render set to true, meaning we want to actually pre-render all of the existing files that we have as just plain HTML files without any backend logic. And in the routes, we have exactly the same feature. So you'll see later that the dynamic option doesn't really work and I'll explain about it a bit later. Let's do the test now. Let's do exactly the same variable we used to. So the term, click the button and you'll see that from Rust works, but the other two do not work. So Vite will already test it and then SvelteKit also doesn't have access to the term one. But if you do developer mindset, let's see what happens. Again, nothing, right? The trick is in the prefix and the prefix should be, should be Vite. No, because that's for the Vite. For the SvelteKit, it should be public underscore because that's the one that is actually used by SvelteKit. And you can refer to SvelteKit documentation to see the differences about public and private variables. Now let's talk more about the private environment variables inside of the SvelteKit. First, let me show you how it would actually work, right? We start with a term variable as usual. You see it works, but not for private SvelteKit. And then let's actually see if we can get it to work and show you all the private SvelteKit variables. For that, let's go to the Svelte config and change the adapter from static to auto. Let's do it again. Would it work? Probably not because we need to tweak a couple more places. Let's try it again. All right, still the same result. Let's go to the API part of the server.ts and we're gonna change pre-render to false and it will actually let you execute in the development mode the whole private SvelteKit API. And you see that the private SvelteKit returns the same variable. The problem with this method is that it's not gonna work for the release method because as I said before, it's not gonna bundle the whole node backend. And you can see here, it gives you all the variables that you have in your print env, so in your environment all the verbs that you have private and public vid and, and so on. So you actually don't want to share all of those inside of the Svelte kit where everybody can access them if they just go and look for your application. So if you go and check the ambient.d.ts is the place where the types are being auto-generated by Svelte kit through vit, you'll see that Svelte kit documentation does not advise you to use this method because this one is bound only for the private deployments when you do node service or server-side rendering like Brussel or Node.js or Netlify and so on. You see, it has access to the vid part, it has access to all the others, and sometimes it just gives you undefined if it cannot find it. All right, up next is Tori Shell. So let me show you how it actually works. Here's the variable and we get it using get and shell. And that's the place where we execute command. And inside of this command, we actually call something called run dash print env that I'll show you how to define a bit later. And then we pass the argument, which is the environment variable name. Let's go to source story, toryconf.json for a second, and I'll show you how this scope is defined. 
Essentially, in Tori 2.0 Alpha, we use the plugin for shell, and inside of the shell, we define the scope with a specific name, and we'll use this name to access this command in the front end, and we let it pass any type of arguments, which is not very secure, so be mindful, you need to actually add more checks on the scope side. So even if your front end gets exposed, you won't get hacked through that command argument. So again, it just runs the command, passes the argument, and then gets you the result of that command being executed. So it's very simple to what you would expect when you just do spawn child, and you get the code of the result, and the code is equals to zero, so there are no errors. We just copy the std out, which is the result of the program, and that's what you get. Let me demonstrate how it looks in the console itself. You just basically do print env, and then you just add the name of the variable, and the result is what you expect, the, the variable itself, right? With extra null terminator. So you just want to trim it, so you would actually get one line without result and new line. Let's test it with a variable from our .anf file. Would it work? Not really yet. So let's see what happens. Should we try another one? Let's do vid underscore, and you see vid works. And if you do public one, svelte kit should work. Okay, so how do we actually get it to return from the Rust and from the shell itself? And the trick is to use that env crate inside of the Rust code. Let me show you how to configure it. You start by dot env load, and inside of this load, it will actually load by default the dot env file, and let's see how it actually impacts the output of our application. Okay, let's do a term as usual. That's a system variable. Okay, we get the result as we did before, but let's try the one from the dot env file, which is developer mindset. Yay, it works, but you can see it pulls it from the dot env file. And the goal of this video is to show you how to configure this for the development and for the production separately, because as you saw, the system behaves differently for the debug mode and for the release mode. Okay, let's do it again, but for the vit underscore developer mindset, and you will see we have two different variables with the same name being pulled from two different files. So in Rust, we pull from the .n file, but in vit, we use the .development file. So let's see if we can modify this and actually get our Rust to return the same result, but from the different files. Let's see if we can configure it to pull the files and basically the data from the different sources. The beauty of Rust is that you can specify different parts of code to be executed in different configurations. And if you want to execute the debug part, you just check for the debug assertions, and that's the part that will enable you to specify a development file for our .env crate. But first, let's make sure we actually load them, not just read them from the files. So add unwrap, and then load them for both, for development and for the production. Done. And now let's finally test it. All right. Yay. You can see that I actually pulled developer mindset from the dot development. Now let's check production. Run and BX story build and specify the target, in our case, the universal one, because I want to build for ARM and x64 architectures. Okay, great. Now let's run it and let's do our classic term and you'll see the results, right? It's not defined because we're not running this application from the console anymore. But if you do a developer mindset, you'll see it doesn't return anything either. If you do the mode, you see the production bit. If you do developer mindset, yay, you see it actually returns the result from the dot and dot production. Let's make sure that env production is not bundled in the open text format. Check the content of your bundle, and you'll see there are none, and that's great news. Let me show you how you can bundle env production inside of your binaries in a different way. Let's keep development as is, and then for the production one, we'll use include underscore str to actually include inside the binary as a string. And then we'll make dot n read from this string as bytes and then load the results that we just loaded. And on line 19, you can actually print the string that we just embedded inside of our binaries. 
and let's build it again. And let's test again. So developer mindset, boom, we get it from end production. Same for the Vite. We get it again from the production. And then the latest one is public. And that's the same one we get from the production. Perfect. It all seems to work. Do we get the mode? Yep. Vite says it's production. Perfect. And now let's actually try to run it from the console so we'll see the print output. And you can see it in the background that we actually get our entire file printed. Obviously it's not secure, so don't do this for the actual production, for the actual release build. And just to show you, I'll double check that it's the content of the same file. You see, that's exactly the same stuff that we got in our console a minute ago. To summarize, I showed you the way to get environment variables using Torres command, using Vit, using SvelteKit, using Shell, using Sidecar, and then how to configure the embedding of the env production and env development files inside of your Rust binaries, inside of the Tori. I published a tutorial so you can find it on developermindset.com slash story dash env and read more about all the different ways to get environment variables. And if you have any questions, just feel free to join our Discord channel where you'll be able to get some help. And if you're interested in building Tori apps in general, please feel free to subscribe to the book I'm writing so you'll be able to get free chapters as I publish them online. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.